Great. So we're continuing to talk about JSON parsing in Swift and what that looks like. Uh, earlier this morning, we were able to create um, Swift structs and we were able to parse JSON lo using local JSON that we created. So we are able to we were able to create, for example, this blob of JSON here with four properties, and we were able to use JSON decoder to decode the JSON into our Swift object. Our Swift object was called person, and our person conformed to Codable, which it needed to conform to Codable. In order to use JSON decoder on that object, it has to conform to Codable. And we were able to print out our person's name and the person's occupation here, right? Great. So continuing on, our objective for the next lectures will be to build this application here. Our application will be called Top Stories. And the Top Stories, the JSON is coming from the New York Times API. What does the JSON look like? I slacked out the JSON to us. But this is what the JSON looks like, right? So at the top level, what is my top level JSON object, Andy? It's a dictionary, right? So here at the top level on line number one, we look at, again, we look at what is that bracket. Is it a square bracket? Is it an angle bracket? So here it's an ang it's a angle, sorry, not angle, curly bracket or square bracket. Here it's a curly bracket that implies it's a dictionary object, right? In that dictionary object, we have a status. We have the copyright section. Whatever we're interested in here, we take. We do not have to implement every property in that JSON file. Everybody with me? For the purposes of our application, for the purposes of our application, we'll use the section, right? And if you look at results, results itself is an array. Everybody sees that? Do we see results here? Results. So results in itself is an array. So we'll take a look together how to decode that particular object here. So we after results, results is an array. It's an array of headlines. In the headlines object, we have a section, which we'll grab. We'll grab the section. We'll also grab the title of the headline. We'll grab the abstract key, also the byline, who wrote it. We'll take the published date. And if we go down here, we have a multimedia type. What's multimedia? It's an array, right? So here we see multimedia followed by square bracket. That implies multi multimedia is an array. Everybody with me? Right? GeoFacet here is also an array. But we'll take our multimedia. Our multimedia, we're only interested in two elements of that array. The first one will be, the first one will be the thumb large format image, right? It's 150 by 150. This will be the thumbnail of our table view. Everybody with me? Also, we'll grab the jumbo, the super jumbo image, which is a bigger image. It's 1365, for example, by 2048. So those are the two multimedia elements we'll grab. That particular example, we'll do it together. There's more JSON happening there. It's not our simple person object, right? There's embedded JSON there that we need to take care of. Everybody with me? OK. So after we've done that, then we could go ahead and assign you all the models to do or work from to give us more practice. And then what does the app look like? So here we have our top stories. The technology name here is coming from the section. Everybody with me? So my navigation title, the section here, is from the section that we grabbed from the JSON. Internet companies, for example, here, that comes from the title of the headline. Okay. That thumbnail image comes from my thumb image multimedia property. Okay? The byline is by, for example, whoever wrote the story. Okay? So this is the objective of the next day and a half of JSON parsing work. Any questions? Do we all have access to the JSON that I just stacked out? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and create a new application. So new project, it's a single view application, we'll call it top stories.
click next, save it. Great, okay, cool. So anytime you're dealing with JSON, the first thing you need to go ahead and do is start modeling, create a file to model what the data is. Fast forward into unit three assessment, right? This is the important part of the assessment, right? So figuring out the model, create the model, then validate, is your model, is the data coming in as I expect it to be? Earlier, remember in unit two where we said the UI was a bit more important there? Right? In that particular assessment for Unit 3, the data will be more important. Do I get data? Right? So do I get data is where I want to create my model file first. Create a model file first, get the JSON that you need, pass the JSON, then move on to the application. Okay? That particular application, the data is more important. Okay? So let's go ahead and get the data. So for my data, I'll create a new file. Create a new file. Let's scroll down. Let's scroll down here. The file we created is an empty file. Scroll down to where it says other. Where it says other here for the headline, for the title. Do we see other? And we'll click on empty. So other, select empty file, select next. For the file's name, we'll say top stories technology dot json top stories technology dot json and that particular file we started off with a lowercase just to indicate that it's an external file that we're creating or external data file that we're creating it's not a type this is not a type it's just a file of the JSON data. So here we have our top stories technology that JSON, we click on create. It's an empty file. It's an empty file that will paste our JSON in. Can I be a question? Okay. Empty file called top stories technology that JSON. Okay. okay, let's go get our JSON. Let's navigate back to the site where we have the JSON. And we'll go ahead, we'll copy the entire line here from line number one. From line number one, I could actually send it out to you guys if you don't want to copy it, that's fine. So we're copying from line number one. I'll just send it out to you guys or just download it, whatever is easier. Wait, if you do raw and you commit on, can you that? It will take the entire um, web page. No, if you press raw on the actual document. Yes. If you press raw and then put command on, it will do the same thing. Yes, you could also do that. Okay, at this point I have my, please, 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 when you paste in, make sure there's no spaces here. Like you see this, this will not be valid JSON. So there's no spaces, there's no line spaces above. I'll slack it out, make it easier. Uh, finder. Did everybody able to paste it in? Okay, so I'll just slack it out. Slack it out. Right here. Okay, I just slacked it out. So just save that file or just copy that file over to your Xcode. Andy, good? Okay, next thing we need to do, we need to create a new file, a new Swift file. We'll go ahead and do that. So a new Swift file. And 
That's where the model will be. So a newsfeed file we created will say news headline. We'll call it news headline. No uh, extensions here. This is a Swift file. It has that Swift by default. And I'll create. Great. So here is where we create our struct. We'll start off by creating a struct. We'll call it headlines data for now. What does it have to do? What do we have to do? Conform to Codable, right? So let's not forget that as we keep going here. Why do we conform to Codable, Andy? So that we could use JSON decoder on that object, right? OK, so here we start off with a struct. We call it headlines data. At this point, we really wanted to see what our JSON is. Let me see what my JSON is here, instead of me going back and forth. Actually, that's fine. Um, my JSON is right here. Let's go up to the top and see what it looks like. So at this point, let's see what we really want and what's the top level. We agree that the top level of our JSON is a dictionary. Let's see what we care about. For that example, we care about section. So we care about section, line number four, we care about section, and we care about results, sorry. So here we care about section, we care about section, we care about results, right? And in the results, we have each headline, we have an array of results, everybody with me so far? So first of all, let's get to the headline. Let's create a struct, we'll call it news headline, where news headline has a section, news headline has a title, news headline has a byline. So let's go ahead and create a next struct here. We'll come back to our headlines data struct. So create a next struct. We'll have multiple structs here. Multiple structs represents different data points of our JSON, because the JSON is nested. Everybody with me? We have nested JSON here. We have to deal with the nested JSON. As opposed to earlier, we had a flat JSON structure. So here we have news headline conforms to quotable. And news headline will be the actual headline elements in the array. Everybody with me? <coughs> each struct will module each struct after what the JSON is. Because the JSON we have here is nested JSON. So for example, our results, our results, if we look at results, Again, make sure you type in it the same way it's typed out in the JSON. If we look at results, what type is results? It's an array of, an array of dictionaries is fine, but an array of, what's those arrays? Each of those arrays, what are they? They're stories, right? So we have the first one here says internet companies. The second one says, Second one says, why everyone? Right, so there are an array of stories or an array of headlines. Everybody with me? Right, so we'll create like a news headline struct. It's an array of news headlines. Everybody with me? So that's what we're representing. So we have to model, we have to model our Swift object similar to what the JSON structure is. The JSON structure, at the top, we have a dictionary. In that dictionary, we have a results array, right? So what we're interested in is that results array. So this is the results array here. Results array is an array of news headline. So that results represents results. I'll put in quotes here. So results represents the JSON array of stories. Remember, results is that exact results in the JSON. We spelt it the exact same way. Later, we'll see coding keys. For now, we haven't seen coding keys yet. Coding keys will allow us to change the name if we want. 
Uh, the results has an array of headlines, correct? So now we need that, we need to create just the, what we need from the headline. Yeah, which are the headlines? We'll take the title, we'll take the abstract, we'll take the byline, the publish date probably, okay. and um, we need to get to the multimedia. It's gonna get really complicated really fast, but I wanna stop it earlier, I wanna break it up. So first of all, we'll validate, is our JSON working? Then we'll go into getting more um, data points of it. Everybody? All right, so headline, what are we interested in? The title, yes. Okay, so it's supposed to be um, an, an array of that specific structure. Yes, okay. very good. So what are we interested in with headline? We said title, right? Title is of what type? A string. And for now, we'll just take abstract, and we'll stop here for now. Again, as developers, it's better to start small and keep growing, as opposed to doing all the decoding first and things goes wrong. And you're like, oh, what went wrong? Is it multimedia that I misspelled? Is my multimedia type not working? Everybody with me? So anytime you get, anytime you get to a complicated piece of JSON that's nested, please break it apart. Get the simpler parts first, make sure that works, and add in extra parts later. Everybody with me? So this is exactly what we're doing here. So far, this is valid. We have at the top level, this is the top level here, top level JSON. At the top level, we have our headlines data. So for example, when we do our decoding, so we'll say headlines data dot self because top level JSON is a dictionary, right? So when we're doing our decoding, this is what we use. We'll say our headlines data dot self. The news headline is each headline in the array. Of, in the array of results. Any questions before we move on? Ask as many questions as we need to before we move on. Yes? Um, what, what's the reasoning for it being a um, dictionary instead of an array? Since they're all good. Uh, you mean the top level? Yeah. Well, good question. So the top level is what we got back from the JSON. The top level of that JSON is a dictionary. So we have to model it using a dictionary. If you try to decode it using an array, like you, your example, like if I want to go, oh, I just want their results, so I just say an array, it's going to um, give you an error. Because it will say top level JSON is a dictionary, expected to decode dictionary, but found an array. I'm just not understanding. They're all stories, but at the top level, that's what you have to look for. What's the top level JSON? Oh. It's a dictionary. Inside that dictionary, we want the results. What is results? It's an array. Everybody, questions about Chelsea's question? Chelsea's was question was, why can't we just use an array directly? We cannot use an array directly because the JSON, the top level of that JSON is a dictionary. What's inside a dictionary? It could have dictionaries, it could have arrays, it could have whatever it has. But where you start is the top level. Oh, no, no. Cool, any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, the way you prompted it is the same at the end. Because I mean, we took it out of the set, like the top of the... Did I really? I think so. Uh, let's see, da, 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 da. you talking about the JSON for file? Yeah. We got 3082, that's the last line. Oh, it was, uh, it was cut off in the display. Okay, cool. All right, so going back to Chelsea's question, is there any other questions about the why part of the top level JSON? And why we're saying when we decode in it, we use in the headlines data as a dictionary. So this format here is a dictionary. If it was an array, we would say open square bracket, close square bracket. Okay? All right. Any questions before we move on? Yeah. Does it, like, are you, would it make sense to alternate, like, each time? 
alternate. What do you mean? Um, basically, like you go from an array to a dictionary to an array, like when you're creating a JSON. If you're creating. It depends on you restrict it to what the JSON is. So we're never making our own JSON. The JSON is always coming from somewhere else. Yes. We'll make our JSON if we have to, but as far as like iOS developers, you're the one consuming data. We consumers of data as iOS developers. The backend person creates the endpoints for us. They create the RESTful APIs for us. We tell them how maybe the data might be better for the app, or we need a specific um, endpoint that doesn't exist. But as far as like creating JSON, we'll create our APIs in Unit 5 using Firebase. But um, that's like unit five. But for now, we're consumers of it. Oh. And um, at the end of the unit, we'll be pushing some JSON file up. But this is a simple set of JSON. It won't be a complicated set of JSON. Okay. But for now, we'll be consuming JSON, whether it be local JSON or um, from, the, from Postman or data, cool, or from the web. Oh. Any other questions? OK, cool. So let's, uh, we could actually. OK, we cannot test yet. OK. On my headlines data, I'll create an extension here. You can, you can extend on a shell? You can extend on any type. Really? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. So the same way we use extensions in, on the view controller, we could extend um, our headlines data. Cool? Great. So let's go ahead and write an extension on our headlines data. The purpose of writing that extension is to get the data from our, it's going to be responsible for getting, for getting the JSON data, passing that JSON data, and returning us an array of news headlines. Right? So we'll write all that code right here in our type. Uh, in our extension, we'll create a static function that gets us the JSON data that we need. It will get us the headlines. So I, I, I understand the reason for using extensions, but in this case, why would it be useful if it's just, it's just one function that you want to get the, the data? Yes. In my example, I want to decouple what the JSON objects are from what the function is. Uh, so here, let's just create a simple static function. I'll call it get headlines. Get headlines, and what does get headlines do? Uh, the task of it, of that particular function, is to parse the is to parse the top stories, technology dot JSON. Into an array of an array of news headline objects. Okay. So when I call that function, I say headlines dot data dot get headlines and it gets me an array of headlines. So into an array of so do you need that extra bracket around the news headlines? Because that's making you feel like it's an array of an array. Um you mean here? Yeah. That's just an array of news headline. Okay, so look news headline, this is news headline. This is that struct. Yes, that's all we need for our table view. For our table view, we only need the array of news headlines. Okay, so array of if you look at our table view again over here, it's just an array of news headlines. Everybody with me? Here we just have an array of news headlines. Ben Benito, questions? Julia? No, I know you love array of arrays. No, I'm just saying because the reason why it's written there is because it's an array of arrays. What we'll be returning is this result. I understand that I'm saying you said it's an array 
Oh, 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 you mean the wording? Uh, into an array, into, I got you, I got you. So into. Is that enough? Yeah. For everybody? Okay. Anything to make it easier? All right. So let's keep going here. So first off, I'll create some headlines array here of news headline. And we are returning the headlines. We'll update our function signature to imply that we are returning a news line array. And we'll go into a new topic or introduce a new topic. So here we're introducing what's known as the bundle. Bundle allows us, bundle allows us to access in-app resources and files. Example, an MP3 file. Or in our case, the top stories that JSON file. So this is the first time we'll actually be using bundle to actually access a file inside of our application. Here is the entire bundle. This makes up the entire bundle. All the files, images, music, whatever it is, that makes up your app bundle. I could say access, I could say read our app resources. Question? The heat? I'm actually burning up right now. I'm feeling it. How? I don't know. I think I'm. Uh, Antonio, people say they want heat. <laughs> the what? <laughs> heat, heat, heat. Okay. Are we ready? Did we write out our comments? The what? Personal heater? Yeah. Okay, so let's use the bundle class to get access to read from the top stories technology.json file. What does that look like? It's an optional, so we need to unwrap it. Whatever the value is, that URL value, it's an optional. So let's go ahead and use a guard to unwrap it. So we'll use a guard statement and we'll call it file URL. The file URL will be the path to that actual file. The actual file top stories technology.json will get back a file URL. If it exists, we'll get it back. That's why it's optional. So the way we access resources in our app is using the bundle, the bundle name, bundle class name. So here we say bundle. Right? So here we see bundle is a representation of the code and resources stored in a bundle directory on disk. So all the resources we have in our app, the MP3 file, Mr. Jahid, that's probably how he, that's what he did, right? You had to access the MP3 file for your Game of Thrones. See Mr. Jahid for Game of Thrones and what he did there. So he had an MP3 file in his Game of Thrones that he included. 
and he was able to play back audio using the bundle. He read the MP3 file, and along with that, he accessed AV Foundation to play back the music file. Right? So that's Mr. Jahid for us there. Right? I mean, see the guy and see his app. It's amazing. All right, so here we'll access the bundle. We'll access the main. Main here is the shared resources. So we say bundle.main for the application. And on that, we want to get access to the URL resource. We want to get access to the URL for the resource name. The resource name will be Top Stories Technology. And the extension will be whatever extension we have for that class. What's the extension here? JSON, right? Without the dot, just JSON. So the name, the resource name will be Top Stories Technology, and the extension will be JSON. Again, spelled out exactly as you wrote it. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So the resource name is a string, and we have Top Stories technology, and the extension is JSON string. Else, we're not going to continue running the app if we don't get that. We need that to continue running our app. So here we'll simply say could not locate JSON file. Yes, exactly. So if it was a Swift file, it would be Swift? Yes. If it's an MP3 file, MP3, and so on. So here, if we option click on File URL, we'll see that it's a URL. That's the first time we're coming across some data type URL. URL, is, URL just impl Im, um, implies the path to a resource. Is the path, like we do URL, like um, dot com, like www.google.com um, is a URL. We could also have local URL paths. In that particular path here, we're saying the URL is in the bundle resources. Right? Julia? This is not URL on a website, everybody. This is URL in the bundle resources. Where is the path for that particular file? If it exists, it gives us the path. If it doesn't exist, it's nil. Exactly. That's, that's the whole point of that particular line here. Get us access to that exact file. OK. So here we have the file URL. So first, access or get access, get the URL to the intended Resource, here we need the URL to the top stories technology that JSON file. Okay, great. So now we have access to the URL. Next, we need to get the data from the contents of the file URL. So now that we have the URL, we need to go ahead and read from the URL to get back the data, to get the contents of that um, path. Okay, so here we have let data equal to data. We'll use the data class here. Data class on it has a method called contents of URL. On the data class, again, I said we've seen a lot of new things today, right? But the good thing is, Whatever we see today, we'll keep using it for the rest of the unit and our labs. So here, data is an object. 
It's a class on data, data implies data. On data, we have a method called contents of URL. So the contents of URL, given a URL, it gets us data. It, it gets us back data. Because at the end of the day, why do we need data? We need data because data is the JSON. We need access to that data. How do we get access to that data? So here we use data that contents of Uh, which one? Yeah, it's still public. It's public. It's a public API. It's not private. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, a minute question was, my get headlines function, is it public? Is it a public API? Yes, it's a public API. Because in my view controller, I have access to it. Right? OK, but it's not a web API. I want to disconnect it, but at the same time, I want to know, I want to make us know that API, we also write API ourselves. All right, so here we have contents of URL. What am I passing in for the URL? File URL, great. Contents of is a method. Same as, same as we have uh, components of on an array. This is a method on data. Uh, so here, here. What's happening here? We saw that earlier. I need to put try, right? Luba sees that. Do we all see that? We need to mark a try. Why do we need to mark a try, Cassandra? Why am I marking contents of URL as a try function? Because it might throw an error, right? There might not exist anything there, right? Maybe there's. Maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe the file is um, full. Whatever it is, we'll get back an error from the particular method. It throws an error, so we need to go ahead and mark a try. Right? If I build my application, I get a next error. I need to do do catch, right? Everybody, you see that? Andy says, I need to do a do catch. Do we all see that? The error also says it. The error says, errors thrown here are not handled. It's not even a warning. It's like, error. So we need to wrap our try in a do catch. Yes, sir? Do is the block of code that you're trying to execute. They're going, they, they, they work hand in hand, right? I could, I could actually go ahead and do try by itself by doing like try, um, like try exclamation mark like this without doing the do catch block. I could build this and it works. Everybody? Why shouldn't we do that? Anybody want to answer? Yes, sir. I won't know what the error is. If you're doing experimentation, you just want to get to your code, that's fine. But if you want to make sure that you have the error being caught, you want to do a do catch. Everybody with me? Right? Everybody. OK? If you, again, for simple purposes of illustration, you just want to code, code, code without catching any error, that's fine. You'll see that a lot if you go to a tutorial or some person showing you how to do something. Because they don't really care about do catch there. But us, we do care about do catch because we want to know if something failed. Right? It's not unwrapping an optional, it's catching an error. Similar, it catches something if, if it goes bad, but it's not unwrapping anything. It's catching an error, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and fix that code. So here, I will copy my line 37. I'll wrap everything in a do catch statement. I'll put my block of code here. So here, do this block of code. Do this block of code on 37, 39. If anything goes wrong, we'll catch it in our cast statement. So in our cast statement, we'll simply just put in a fatal error here. And we'll say contents failed, failed to load from contents. Failed to load contents. All right, 
So here we have data. If we option click on data, this is what we, the hard work, we've done a bit of work here, but at the end of the day, what we needed is data. We had data earlier in our playgrounds. Everybody remember the data we had? So this bit of work here, we had to do more work because now we have an external file, we had the file we had to read from, as opposed to our simple Swift playgrounds. If we go back to our Swift playgrounds here, let me just show us. Uh, recent, 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 this guy here. So in our Swift playgrounds earlier, in our Swift playgrounds earlier, our data was very easy to get to, right? This is our data here. We created ourselves on the fly. Everybody with me? But that particular example, we have local data in our project. How do I get access to that local data, right? I'm not gonna put like um, data using UTF-8 on that entire block of data, right? I'll make it more efficient. I'll just use the bundle. I'll use the bundle here that Swift provides and read in the data from my top stories technology that JSON file. Everybody with me? This is going to be exactly what you do for any upcoming um, lab that we have. We have a local data file, and you have to read it using the bundle class. What we did earlier is exactly what you want to do if you want to test some JSON. No need to create a big project. Create a simple multi-line. Everybody with me? a simple multi-line JSON, and do everything in, this, in the polygons file. You have a bigger application like what we have right now, this is what you do, if you have local, local JSON. Okay, we'll see three ways, by the time we finish unit three, we'll see three ways of um, reading JSON. One, one way is in playgrounds, one way is local, and the other way is from the internet. Okay, okay. By next week, we'll start seeing from the internet where we're using Postman. Today, I wanted to show us Postman to see what the data looks like from the internet, okay? But uh, more importantly today is for local JSON. And again, I've seen those more times this year than last year where our fellows get projects, code challenges from employers with some local JSON and they have to do something with it, right? So knowing how to use the bundle to read from local JSON is very important, okay? All right. So let's see here, I have my headlines here. I have my data here, great, let's keep going. Oh, we got three minutes, can we do it? Fire drill. At one, three minutes, are we good? I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna pull up Paul, Paul Hudson. Um, how are we doing, three minutes, we good? Okay, let's do it, what do we wanna do here? We have data. So let's parse, parse data to our Swift news headline. Right, okay. So let's go. We have results, well, don't call it results. What do we have? We have our headlines data. I'll simply call it results for now. Call it headlines data. We'll use JSON decoder. Yes, that's why we have the data. We have the data on line 38. Tiffany? Yeah. We have the data on line 38, so now we want to pass that data to our Swift array. So here I'm going to decode. What am I decoding? What's the syntax here? <coughs> we have it up here, the top level JSON. Headline data, okay. So headline data is the top level JSON. That self, it's a dictionary. And we have the data that we just got from the contents of URL. Great, so if I, here if I option click, well first of all we need to try, it also throws. If I option click on my headlines data, I have headlines data. So on my headlines data, I could say results equal to headlines data dot results. Right, headlines data has a results property. Do we agree? In our struct, we have the results property. 
And that resource property is what? What is the uh, data type? Array, array, very good, array of news headline. There, we did it. I could say we did it right before one o'clock too. Only thing left to do is test it. Does it get, get us our headlines? Were we able to type in those two lines? Line 42 and 43, yes? Final thing is to test it. If you're done, go to your view controller and simply pri uh, print or dump, maybe. Just dump headlines that, simply dump headline, what's the extension? Uh, extension on headlines data. Simply go ahead and dump headlines data dot get headlines. And that's gonna give you all the headlines. So if you're done, go to your view controller in your view load. Go to your view controller in your view load and print or dump rather. Just dump simply headlines. Simply type in headlines data dot get headlines. And you should get a dump of your data. Can we go to the view controller? Okay, so going to the view controller in my view load. Did you say it's freezing? Um, dump our news, our headlines data that get headlines and run our application. Not on my phone. Oh, we spoke about dump uh, two weeks ago. So dump basically dumps the objects in a hierarchical manner. Not like that upstairs. It basically dumps the data in a more representational, representational format, right? So here we have a dump of the 39 elements we have in our, in our JSON. Everybody with me? So it goes above print. Print would have a blob of the objects. It would be harder to read it. But dump does it in a hierarchical manner. Everybody with me? Again, we've used it like from two weeks ago. Okay, cool. By this point, we should all have 39 elements. No, that's fine, we'll go back. So we have at least the first element, the title should be internet companies, but let's go back to our news headline and see maybe we missed something somewhere. So the two key lines we added was line 42, we decoded the JSON. Line 43, we assigned the results to our headlines variable. Everybody have the headlines variable? Cassandra? The headlines variable on line 26, right? You assign it here and you return it, and by then you should be able to see your dump results. Any other questions? The dump is dump. Oh, uh, in the beauty load, simply say dump, open parents. Dump open parents, headlines data, dot get headlines. Any other questions? Shania, how are you doing? Uh, one second. I'll show you offline, is that okay? Because I want to make sure everybody is um, able to see the dump of the data. Luba, were you able to get your dump? Excellent. Yulia, anybody not able to get the dump because I'm ending lecture? Mr. Greg, errors? You got zero elements. Did you, um, do you have a variable on line 26 to capture the elements that you have? Yeah. Do you assign it to the elements on line 42? No. No, okay. Um, anybody else? Decoding error? Uh, make sure. What's that? Because I, I saved the file and I deleted it, and that's what I got when I transferred it. Did you delete it, Amini? Is it spelled the exact same way? I'll come over and see what you have, because it needs to be spelled exactly the same way as the name that you have here. If it's not spelled exactly the same way, it won't find it. All right, cool. So I'll end lecture here, and I'll come around if anybody else needs help.